Yep. Hello? Uh, I held on a second. What's up? Hi there. Uh, are you Mr. King? Yeah, what? It's very nice to meet you. What do you want? Oh, uh, I was just calling because, well, coming by because I, I donated to your cause. You know, BLM, I donated a significant amount of money. I was just wondering if I could know where those donations went. I want to know what families I affected. They're helping cause. people all over. Okay, listen, give me your hand. Okay, feel this pool. You feel this pool? Yes. 83 degrees. You ever okay. felt a better heated pool? I don't get why that's relevant to what I asked you. That's where your money's going to. To your pool? Look at this sick house. That I live in. I that see That you it, don't. Sir. That's where your money's going to. But I donated to Black Lives Matter. Well, I am Sean King, and I am black. And my life matters. Are and having, you? having an ostrich feather coat is really important to me. So my money didn't go to the families that I donated to. Is that what you're telling me right now, Mr. King? Chives. Chives. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're going to have to get this lady off of my property. Who's Chives? Chives. He's my butler, man. Actually, so it's Jeeves, but thank you. <laughs> Chives, shut up. Is my donation is also going Actually, to Chives? It, it funded a rare collector's item purchase. It's a bladeless knife without a handle. We purchased this rare item, so it's it's going to great, great use causes. <laughs> yes, we use that bladeless knife without a handle every single day. You should be sued. This is unacceptable. Blame it on Chives. He handles the checks. And scene. <laughs> oh my God. And Good job, I'm Chives. so glad that's over. <laughs> Were you guys able to follow that? Because if you weren't able to follow that, it's going to lead us straight into our first story. If you've been on Twitter at all today, you have seen the name Sean King, as you do many times, because Sean King likes to post his L's and he gets roasted a lot on Twitter. But this one is from a very special guest star, and that is Samaria Rice. If you don't know who Samaria Rice is, she is Tamir Rice's mother and the reason that they've gone head to head uh today is because sean king came out on his podcast and was talking about a recent conversation that he had with samari rice uh and about what he's done and how he's personally connected to her and blah 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 blah, blah. she came out and made a post coming after sean king i will read you exactly what she said um just to give you a little bit of background tamir rice is a 12 year old boy who was shot and killed by police in 2014. this happened because he was the the police were called on him. He was outside with a toy gun. It did not look like a toy gun at the time. Police were called, police responded, and Tamir subsequently lost his life at the hands of police. So Black Lives Matter, of course, ran with that like crazy. And now Sean King was running with talking to Tamir Rice's mom, and she has shot back with this. I'm gonna show you the screenshot here. Sean King, why do you think it's so important to tell folks that we had a conversation? Well, we talked and everything that was said was very toxic and uncomfortable for me to hear that you raised additional money and then say you did not want to bother me. Personally, I don't understand how you sleep at night. I never gave you permission to raise nothing. Along with the United States, you've robbed me for the death of my son. You gave me a cop and donut conversation. All lies, Sean. Please stop thinking we on the same page as a young as a white man acting black, you are an imposter that cannot be trusted. My son was 12 years old and the DOJ needs to reopen his case, period. Tamir's human rights were violated. Why would you so ever make it about you? You are a self, selfish, self-centered person and God will deal with you, white man. <laughs> God will deal with you, white man. <laughs> it was True very, words have never been spoken. It was a very interesting way to come after him. Uh, but the part that I want to focus on is the fact that Sean King raised a significant amount of money on the name of Tamir Rice. And where did that money go? Nobody knows. Went to right. Chive's bank account. Right. Nobody knows where that money went. And that's the important thing is that you have all these activists coming on and talking about how much they care about black people, how much they actually want to help these communities. And then when push comes to shove and anyone asks them for proof about what they've actually done, they can't show for it. They have their big houses and their ostrich feather coats and all of these other different things that they spend the money on, but nothing that's actually helping the black people. It was the same with uh, Breonna Taylor's mother, right? Right. It was Breonna Taylor's mother and now Tamir Rice. Uh, his mother is coming out. So this isn't a unique one-off statement. There's multiple people and multiple people who actually work in Black Lives Matter across the nation are coming out saying, we're disgusted with how the organization has presented itself. Right. So now you have two victims of which Black Lives Matter has run with using their names. And you know the big statement, say her name, say his name, put it out there. They need to be heard. They receive all this money from people who want to support the, their, their proposed cause. And where does that money go? Well, Tamir Rice's mother doesn't know where that money went. 
Breonna Taylor's mother does not know where that money went. Patrice Kohler's money went towards four properties of which she is using for her family, which cost her millions and millions of dollars. And who knows what Sean King did with the additional funding that he received for Black, from Black Lives Matter? I don't know. How do you make uh, m- some way to make himself look black? <laughs> right. It's what he spent the money on. I don't know what that entails, but something probably <laughs> and it's helped just... with that N- NAACP lady. What was her name? Oh, Rachel remember? Dolezal. Yeah, Rachel Dolezal, who said that she was black for years and actually ended up being white. You remember this whole thing? Yes, yeah. I remember. Transracial. Yeah, wild. She identifies wild. If you can say as that you're tra- if you identify as black, it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If you can say that you are another race, then you can just say that you're anything in the world. It you means can. that nothing means anything. I mean, it's yeah, it's the same thing with biological men saying that they're women. If you can just identify as whatever you want, anybody can identify as anything. That is the grounds that we've opened up here in America by allowing that to be. You can say that you identify as anything, okay? Taylor can come on and say, I identify as black. That just because he says it though doesn't mean that he is. So Sean King coming out and saying that he's black doesn't mean that he is black. Isn't he like twenty five percent black? Or yeah. something to that. I don't yeah. know. To something to that effect. Yeah, is there like an like a certain percentage number that like you can officially go? Because like Barack Obama, he he's black. He's the first black president, even right. though his mom is a white lady from Nebraska. So I mean, where is it? Is it fifty percent? Is it twenty five percent? Like, do you, are you officially black? Are you able to say that? Or I not? mean, look, no. I, if you have a, a drop, if you have a. Dr- <laughs> I'm being sarcastic here, by the way. This no. is just pointing out how dumb the, the way people treat this stuff is. Like, you're mixed race. Okay, that's what you are. Like, it's whatever. We don't have to worry about where the labels are and everything. But people are so obsessed about this. And there's that cultural power you get if or social equity you get if you're, like, right. you can are able to claim that, you know, when no, it's, it's true. It's just like if it's so hard to be black in America, why would, if you're <laughs> yeah, exactly. white, why would you choose to be black? Exactly. I talk about <laughs> red pill moments a lot when I was working on the left. And obviously, it wasn't one thing that caused the light bulb. It was a series of different events. But one of those events was I. I was showing up to some sort of event that we were throwing and when you show up of course you put name race your pronouns or whatever and one of the organizers was like do you identify as fully black i was like what did you just ask me she's like i know you're biracial but do you identify as fully black because a lot of people who are like half black would just say oh i'm black and i was so taken aback that that's a right. thing that you can do you're taking a black I'm so <laughs> yeah. taken a black. And then there's the whole thing about people who are actually black who don't act black enough. So people on the left are like, you know, oh, Uncle you're John. you're not you don't think the right thing, so oh, you're right. not really one of us. I get it all the time. I that get is, it all the time. And there's the African thing where it's like you're Nigerian, so you're not really black. You don't have the black experience. Right. Blah blah blah. blah. Right. That is something interesting. With like, I grew up my high school and middle school and elementary school even. I grew up in places that were very racially diverse, and it was like all the kids who were. Uh, half black, half white, Mm -hmm. they always said that they were black. Right. They didn't say that they were biracial. They Mm -hmm. would always say that they are black, which just goes into that point I just said again. Like, if it's so hard to be black in America and you're half black, half white, why do you choose the black side to represent your identity? I think you are also, you're pushed to do that. And in a way, I was through the duration of my life. One of these days, we are going to react to an old speech that I did at the March for Our Lives in oh, Orlando. You got to see the Afro. <laughs> you got to see the Afro. And we will we will watch that because I talk about how it feels to be to be black in America and the communities that, I, you know, just brainwash garbage. Yeah. I will be cringing the entire time. So Will and Taylor can do commentary on it. But I will show <laughs> it to you guys. I'm willing to fall on my sword for that one. I'm willing to show one of my old speeches. My old speeches weren't nearly as one of your old lefty speeches? Not lefty. Okay, I never gave well, a speech as a lefty. Well, it was I'm a conservative a speech, speech, but it was cringe because I didn't do a, a great job. Okay, well, good. If you're willing to put one forth, I'll put mine forth. I will. There we go. It wasn't a perfect speech like all of those <laughs> speeches are now. <laughs> yeah, it was just a, it was a 9.5 out of 10, and it was so cringy. You yeah. can't even believe it. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, speaking of talking in front of people, I was recently on Candace. Woo! The episode came out yesterday. Uh, if you got the chance to see it, it is on the Daily Wire. You can get that on the app or you can get it on their website, dailywire.com. I'm going to show you guys a little clip from that so you can see. I was on the panel with Candace, my favorite political commentator, Michael Knowles, and Jason Meister. So I'm going to show you a little clip here. If I can get it to start for you guys. Let's see. All right, everybody. What better way to celebrate Juneteenth than with me? breaking down this week's most important stories alongside the author of Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, which is officially out today, Michael Knowles. (laughs) We also have Prager U personality Amala Epinobi. (laughs) And former Trump campaign advisory board member, Jason Meister. 
All right, guys, we have a lot going on. Um, and so I obviously was trending over this. Most obvious thing in the entire world that this was gonna be, we need to celebrate Juneteenth, followed by actually, we need more. And so Macy Gray kind of got started right away with Juneteenth is not enough. And she wrote an opinion piece. And she basically is saying for Juneteenth, America needs a new flag. Her exact quote, which she wrote in the article, is that the American that flag no it. longer represents democracy and freedom. It no longer represents all of us. It's not fair to be forced to honor it. It's time for a new flag. Who's surprised here? I knew that the libs would prove us right. It was a that was a courageous position that you took. I'm not even I'm not just flattering you. Most conservatives <laughs> were going along. They always get There's the giggle. <laughs> the and they say, oh, Juneteenth, the most sacred feast day ever. And this. it's obviously completely contrived. And so you called it out. I knew they'd prove us right. They proved us right within like 48 hours. Faster right? than I thought. It, Faster than I thought. Because, of course, the Macy Gray argument is the logical conclusion. Mm -hmm. If you're going to have what is now a new National Independence Day, that's what the act is called, the Juneteenth National Independence Day. If you have a new Independence Day, you need a new flag for a new country based on new ideas. That is what the left is giving us. And it's just, it's just like, where are they going with this? Like every other holiday. Imagine if we looked at every holiday and said, oh, you, you shouldn't celebrate this because at that time you weren't treated well. Like a Japanese, this holiday, well, you were in internment camp, so you shouldn't, you shouldn't be celebrating this holiday. Irish people, when they came to this country, remember there was the Irish segregation, Irish need not apply because they had illnesses. Like this is, this just actually makes no sense. Right, I think their aim is to break down all of our institutions and all of our systems. It's very clear, especially with her commentary on the American flag. And yet they'll tell you they're the ones who truly love America. If you believe America is systemically racist, how much can you love this country? Right, that's exactly right. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Boom, How much up. can you really love this country <laughs> if you think it's systemically racist? That's, Dyer. that's yeah. true, Amala. Good job. Thank you. I don't get the one thing I have to say. I don't get why all these conservatives and Fox News and all this stuff brought up this whole Macy Gray thing about wanting to change the flag. This lady had one good song from like 15 years ago. She's some yeah. washed up celebrity. Who cares? Yeah, who I didn't Macy even know Gray, who she was. Yeah, who cares what Macy Gray thinks? That's why I didn't, we had this like on one of the articles of maybe we talk about on this show. And I was like, I don't want to talk about that. She's like a nobody. You give, you start talking about it, then you give this lady credence that her ideas have some sort of validity, but no one knows who she is. Yeah, we, we often toe the line of, do we talk about these stories and do we talk about these ideas? And we have to sort of go off who's talking about it, what, what sort of drama it's drumming up, because I don't know, it's a duality of, there are people like her and they don't have much influence, but once the idea gets out there and people are talking about it, she is influencing a significant amount of people who then see that idea and they're like, oh yeah, Maybe we should change the American flag, but are we contributing to that or are we fighting against it? It's a tough Right. I think you have to look, I think what, what we do that I think we do very well in the show versus a lot of other shows, uh, kudos to us. We do a great job. <laughs> shockingly, is, Will shockingly, is appreciative I mean, of something that he's doing. <laughs> I mean, I do just a fantastic job with this show. You know, you have no idea. Anyway, but looking at stories and things that are really influential to people. So looking at a story and saying, okay, this is at a university where kids are actually learning it, which means that people are going to be taking this actually into the real world and exploring these ideas versus just like some dumb celebrity coming on and saying something because they're a dumb celebrity. Sure. So I think we choose our stories very particularly and, and very well. Well, good. I yeah. like that you think that. Well, I I agree. <laughs> I'm giving. A, it's a good thing. I think it that's why. That's, I think that's why on our survey, people were so nice to us. Right. Right. Speaking of which, please, uh, are we are we still having the survey? We are. We are still doing the survey. Today's so the last day. Today's the last, last day. Day. If you haven't done it yet, what are you doing with your life if you're not filling out our survey? Because it's Seriously. truly very, very important, and we need your feedback on this podcast. We need to know: Are you watching it daily? Do you want to watch it daily? Do you want us to keep producing this podcast and keep doing it daily? So give us your notes. Tell us if you've learned anything from us. Taylor's going to put the survey link down below. If you have not filled that out, again, please do so. But speaking of, you know, important stories, Prager, you put out a new stories of us yesterday by Roxanne Beckford Hodge. And I'm gonna play you a little clip from that. You guys can go check this out at PragerU.com. If you wanna watch it, just go to PragerU.com, click watch and go to Stories of Us. This is our newest video with her. Prove You're Not Racist becomes this game of twister. Parents need to know that their children are being absolutely damaged. I'm Roxanne Beckford Hogue, and this is my story. Bars. I'm a mom of four, an actress, a small business owner, I'm from Jamaica, island of, not New York. And I had a pretty idyllic, amazing childhood until things got really hairy politically on my island. 
to the point that my mother announced that we were moving to a new country the night before. Jamaica went through a lot of turmoil in the 70s, and politics became everything. And when that happens, mob rule happens. And so we moved to America when I was 11. Being an American citizen, it is a beacon of freedom. It means you can say and be and do anything. Great place to stop that. If you guys want to watch the rest of this video, again, go to PragerU.com, click watch, and go to Stories of Us. This is Roxanne Beckford-Hodge. She does have a very beautiful story, and you can check that out at our website. Yeah, you can. Okay. I do like it. <laughs> you do like it. It's not an I don't like it. It's a I do like it this day. Okay, our next story here. Uh, you've been hearing Loudoun County, Loudoun County, Loudoun County, probably a hundred times. We've spoken about Loudoun County on this podcast set on several different occasions because they're having an ongoing battle between parents, teachers, and students and their school board because their school board, regardless of what parents and students and teachers are saying, is, are continuing to push this critical race theory, the gender theory, the, the sexual education in their schools and parents continue to go and speak out about it. Now, at the recent school board meeting in Loudoun County, Virginia, things got a little a little crazy. They ended up ending the school board meeting early because parents were being too outspoken. It was getting too rowdy and a man was subsequently arrested. So here's a clip from that. So listen, listen, listen to me. At this point, the meeting is over, right? It's it, not over. No, listen, it's listen. not over. It we is, were right. meeting. We but were meeting. If you look okay. Passions were high. Passions were high. It's an unfortunate thing that uh, simply speaking out to your school board and trying to make some change for your children is resulting in this sort of tur turmoil. It should be just common knowledge that critical race theory is wrong. It should not be present in our schools. Parents, teachers, and students should not have to go through this sort of strife just to make sure that their values and their morals are being represented in their students' education. They can't arrest all of us. They There's really your moral can. of the day, okay? <laughs> they can't take us all down. That, that is very true. And I mean, kudos for teachers and parents for continuing to show up at these school board meetings and not letting things die down and get quiet. Because when you allow that to happen, the school board just feels that they can do whatever they want and they can continue to push this ideology within our schools. So what we were talking about yesterday with the fatigue, you get fatigued by yeah. having these things continually happen. You have to keep going back and saying the same things and telling them that they're dumb and that this is wrong and evil and all these things. And you keep having to do it because it keeps happening over and over again. But when you get a big group of people, there's a lot of energy there. There's a yeah. lot of stuff that you can do to get behind a movement and keep people motivated, keep people passionate. So it's about getting a group of people who you know will have the same sort of value system as you to fight back against these things. It's hard to do it alone. You get fatigued, and that's why you have to get a good group of people. Yeah, and we're seeing more and more of these videos of parents going to these meetings and speaking up. And I think every single time, I mean, they, they go viral like all the time. Every week there's there's a bunch because this is, you know, the rubber's reading, meeting the road with this issue right now in America. And I think that, you know, the more this is happening, it's actually that's how you fight against that, sati that fatigue is you see individuals standing up, demonstrating that they're bravery, standing up for their values, going out and doing something about it. And that, you know, that energizes more people to do the same. And I think that's more of what we're seeing. And I was going to ask you guys just based on this video, you know, do you think with how many that we're seeing that parents and people who are standing up and speaking out against this stuff are starting to make a dent in this the dominance of critical race theory in our schools and in our culture right now or or what do you where do you guys think that's at i mean there better be something in loudon yeah. county i mean right seriously they're doing something different every single day the sort of ground zero of the like of the <laughs> whole uh, fight against critical race theory in schools and awoke education i mean it is. they're definitely making a dent in this because a lot of us or a lot of you guys watching i'm sure these past few months have been your first times hearing about critical race theory and it might have been your first introduction seeing some of these videos so of, of course it's making a dent simply by just having these videos go viral and being seen by people who may not have known what critical race theory was. I was talking about critical race theory years ago when I was working for the left. So it has always been something that has been in the works. It's always been an ideology that is being fleshed out through time. It is just now coming to the front and center of our, of our political conversation. So it's definitely making a dent in the culture simply by the fact that we're talking about it because it was something that was happening, uh, you know, 
underneath the surface. It was an underground operation that nobody was talking about, and it was slowly infiltrating our schools. It's not like we just woke up one day and suddenly critical race theory was in our schools. This has been a long-term plan to implement this sort of ideology and this sort of teaching with our children, because the left knows that the children are at the forefront of this battle with our culture. They know that if they can influence and, and mold these minds to their ideology, that they will be more successful in the future. So the fact that we're talking about it alone proves to me that we are making a dent. We're going to keep sharing the videos and keep sharing the testimonies. Yeah, and, and you guys should too. Parents. And you guys should too. You should go on social media and share it. Share it on Rumble and whatever else that you go on. Right. And well, I think a lot of times we do, we do often get comments of, oh, we talk about this all the time or we keep seeing videos of this, blah, blah, blah. It's so boring. But we have to keep talking about it yeah. because I think a, a large part of where we lose as conservatives is conceding ground. And we do it often because the left is loud and the left does not stop. They continue and continue and continue to fight. How long have you been hearing about this race issue for? It has been decades, decades uh, since, since the end of the civil rights movement. We've been hearing about race in America and how we continue to be a racialized country and that we need to make change and as conservatives we concede and we concede and we concede and we go oh my gosh okay we'll give you this small thing we'll give you the inch and then they take the mile so we have to keep talking about these things and we have to keep fighting yeah but the people that are supposed to be fighting for us aren't actually fighting for us so that makes it a lot tougher it is that's why we continue to lose it is tough and it, that's why we're fighting on this podcast and speaking truth that's right, what we're doing right we should call this the i don't know fighter podcast i couldn't think the of the beacon of gondor the beacon Truth. of gondor podcast i mean yes. i gotta i gotta give it to the left i mean they're amazing when it comes to grassroots organizing and the foundation of grassroots organizing is education and that's what we attempt to do with this podcast that's why we bring you daily stories so that's our that's our goal any any additional comments on that just like i, I will say that i think that people on the left generally find meaning in activism and i think conservatives are more prone to find meaning in living their lives and being left alone right. and raising their families and just, I don't know, having their values and just living life. And, and, but you know, the, they know they're not taking a nap on the other side and they're not, you know, mm. they're not coming, toning down anytime soon. So we need to continue to be energized and, and wake up to what's going on because, you know, they are trying to advance and take more and more ground and we do get exhausted. But I like something Ben Shapiro said is like, you know, we, oh, this isn't the, hill, this little thing isn't the hill to die on. Why are you, why are you, you know, conservatives here all the time? Why are you making such a big deal about them, you know, putting choose your gender on a box of cereal or something like that. And, but it's like every time that you say this isn't the hill to die on, that's ground that you've given up to the, to, to this ideology. Right. And so, you know, it's worth making a big deal about it. it's worth standing up and and combating it with truth and you have to continue believing that when we say true things that the truth will ultimately win you have to have faith in that and like you know continue to work to you know hold up the truth as a light and as the darkness continues to to try to overcome it right the left is those activists conservatives have to realize all of you guys watching right now you have to realize that your way of life that you want to live taking care of your family and all of these other things is not going to be there if you don't become the activist. Mm -hmm. You have to be the activist and be the person going out and knocking on doors and talking to your friends and posting on social media and going to school board meetings and whatever else other things that you can think of to do to make something change. Right, and recognize that as conservatives, we have a harder sell. It is so much easier to sell to people that they are oppressed, that they are victimized by their society and that they don't have to take responsibility for your for their failures because the systems have failed them or the institution has failed them or their governance has failed them. It is not easy to go and talk to people and say, you know what, as a conservative, I believe that a lot of our lives is, are based on self-responsibility and our own actions and being accountable for those actions and that we should value our family and we should value American tradition. It is so much harder to get, so much harder to get people to really appreciate America than it is to get people riled up and fight against systems of which they think are against them. So we have to work twice as hard and we have to be just as loud as they are. Obviously not as offensive and as uh, just degenerate as they are, but we need to be just as loud. Yeah. And our, our values are worth fighting for too, because, you know, we, we, I think that conservatives, we have the, the truth on our side and that's the best ally to have of all. And, you know, and like you're saying, I think we have to do, it's harder for us because we don't get to just, you know, repeat the same 10 talking points that is that the media is repeating. We, you, but th that's where we got to be better than them and not just, you know, fight the way that they fight with the dishonest arguments and right. shallow thinking. Dig deep into the values that you know. Dig deep into truth. Um, Traeger U has tons of resources about American values and, uh, you know, 
find places like that to go pay attention to what's going on in the world and you know be aware and be prepare yourself to be able to you know confront these arguments in your schools if it, if it's you know in, in encroaching on your child's education or wherever it is in your workplace be prepare yourself and be ready to stand up for your values because we need it more now than ever before Right. And uh, let's give, go ahead and give a round of applause. We have a hero today who has done this and has spoken out and come forth and talked about an issue of which is near and dear to our hearts as conservative, and that is Brett Favre. And he came Surprise, out and talked about... That last name right. <laughs> I did. Okay. I've okay. learned. Fun story. Fun yeah. story. Fun story. Fun story. Did you say it wrong before? I've said it wrong in the past. Well, no. Okay. Brett Favre was trending on social media like a couple months ago, and I w- Amla walked in my office, and I was like wearing something, and oh, check it out. Brett Favre is trending or something. And she's like, who's Brett Favre? And I was like, <laughs> what? And then we had this whole thing where, like, she, was, I, I was like, okay, what team won the Super Bowl last year? Or, you know, who's the most legendary quarterback who's living, who's still playing right now? And she, like, could not name Tom Brady, could not name, uh, yeah. I don't know, what team he played for. Yeah. And, like, we did this whole thing. It's on my Instagram. I believe I said, who is Brett Favre? <laughs> Brett Favre is a great guy. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways. Brett Favre has come out recently to speak about Laurel Hubbard. If you guys are not familiar with who Laurel Hubbard is, this is a new uh, Olympic weightlifter who is a transgender woman who will be competing on the women's team in the Olympics this year. So Brett Favre came out and said, this is absolutely not fair. It's not fair to women, to biological women who compete in these sports. Uh, He said directly here, that's unfair. It's not fair for a biological man, even if this person wants to be a woman or feels compelled. If you want to become the opposite sex, that is fine. I have no problem with it. But you can't compete against males or females. Um, you can't pit males against females right. in these sports. If Amal and I had a competition in any sport, I would destroy her. I mean, maybe. I, mean, I would destroy any woman maybe. in any sport. Except like, well, like gymnastics, but you're going to say yeah. it's not a sport. Gymnastics. <laughs> Badminton. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's totally unfair. Of course. I mean, Brett Favre has every right to say this, but this is common sense. But now common sense is not very common anymore at all. And okay. so things, things like this are considered incredibly controversial. I'm sure there are people in the sports world already coming after Brett for saying something like this. But, I mean, this shouldn't even be a brave thing to say. This is so obvious. It's so obvious that this is a man. It's a man going and competing and saying that they are a woman. Right. That is what it is. In in background on this, so Laurel Hubbard has been competing in weightlifting competitions since being a teenager. Uh, So, and hasn't transitioned to being a female until the age of 35. So transition late in life as a biological male to a female and is now going to be competing against women and thus far uh, Laurel Hubbard has participated in female competitions and has won every single one that she's been a part of. Imagine yeah. being a, a, in a female Olympian who's spent your whole life training for this moment for these Olympic Games and right. you have to go up against a guy who you know has been working out for all this time <laughs> right. and just transitioned when he was 35 um, and you know, you he's going to blow you out of the water right. uh, without even lifting a finger. Like, remember when Zuby did his little stun a couple, oh, was it a year or two ago, when he was like, he just deadlifted like a normal amount for him to deadlift, which was like 400 some odd pounds or whatever. And then he's like, oh, by the way, I uh, identified as a woman while I did it. So I broke the record in, in Great Britain for, uh, you know, tr- the female record for deadlifting or whatever. And like, it caused a viral you know, sensation because it just exposes that this, that everyone knows this is ridiculous. Right. That's the thing. Right. It's so dumb. Did the, does anyone know if this guy, Laurel Hubbard, had, did he have the surgery or not? Does anyone know? But you can see. I don't know if the main surgery, but it looks at least top surgery has been mm. performed. Like, did he get but it? Gender snatch. affirming surgery, as they're calling yeah. it? Gender confirmation. Confirmation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Let's call it that. Let's let's go ahead and r- run with that. And again, that's more ground that you should not concede. It should not be called gender confirmation surgery. Yeah. What, it, what should it be called? Uh, gender reassignment, as it was called before. And that's exactly yeah. what it is. You are reassigning your gender. You because are not you're confirming. confirming. Yeah, that you're, you're implying that there, you already were this, and right. now we're just confirming it with your biology. Right, right. God I don't doesn't, like it. God doesn't confirm it. <laughs> Will, Will doesn't confirm it. I don't. Will, it does not confirm I it. I don't confirm it. <laughs> but yeah, it's an unfortunate thing, and I imagine that Laurel Hubbard is going to be coming home with gold in the Olympics. Yeah. Assuming... That, uh, but this is what it does. Like, what does that even mean anymore? You know, if, if our if the integrity of competition itself in sports is compromised, then it's like, okay, cool, great job. You right, know, and right. like, what, he didn't have to train nearly as hard as any of the actual, you know, biological women that are 
that have spent their lives doing this. You didn't have to go through like, and then you get into like girls who are relying on scholarships. Like we had that video with Selena soul who like she spent her whole career, high school career working for this was hoping to get a scholarships and she's getting beat out of her opportunity to, to compete for scholarships because of trans trans runners. It's right. just, it's violating the entire, and like everyone knows this is just, yeah, yeah, but it's a, it's a bigger issue than all this because I mean, women's weightlifting. I don't watch women's weightlifting. Okay, yeah. never watched women's weightlifting in my life. I don't really care about women's weightlifting. No offense to you, women's weightlifters out there, but this is a bigger problem where our society comes and says, "Okay, this is okay. You can come and say what you're whatever gender you want, and we are going to affirm. Society right. is going to bend over backwards to affirm that you are this gender, and so you can go into whatever bathroom you want. You can play whatever sport you want. You can do all these different things just by saying that you are this different gender, and it's." It's not true. Right, and the left will sit here and tell you, oh, well, it's just sports. It's so crazy that you care so much about sports, blah, 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 you're so American, it's so annoying. But you don't realize that if you allow this to happen, like Will said, it does go into every other facet of your society. And I spoke about this a little bit on Candace. Here in California, they have allowed now male inmates who identify as females to be transferred over to female prisons. And subsequently, after announcing that legislation, over 260 different male inmates have applied to be transferred over to female prisons. And this is without hormone blockers. This is without hormone replacement therapy. This is without sex reassignment surgery. It's without any marker of a biological difference between you and another man. And now they are allowing inmates to transfer into women's prisons. What do you think is going to happen with that? In California, actually, they had a case where they transferred a serial killer who is known for killing females into a female prison. If you allow it here, you allow it everywhere. So, So choose your ground. And this is not ground that you want to concede. It is not right. You are letting people's delusions control society right. instead of saying, this is factual, this is what's right, you are not a man or you are not a woman, whatever it might be. Instead of saying that, we say, okay, you can be whatever you want and we are going to change all the rules of society to make you happy instead of what about all of the other people who this affects in a negative way. Right. Where are the feminists right now? Because I, I hear literally nothing. Where are the feminists right now? Because chirp, if chirp, you, crickets. right, right. Crickets. Can't if you really you. cared about women, I think you'd be speaking out against this because where, what's the glass ceiling anymore? Does the glass ceiling not exist anymore? Can women break anything anymore? If a man can just come along men, and do it better than you? Men keep breaking the glass ceiling right. for women. <laughs> exactly. So you, you complain and Smash. you complain. <laughs> Smashing the glass ceiling. Oh my I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hear me roar. <laughs> You complain and complain about patriarchy, and then when women finally get ground to where they are competing and they are winning accolades, you're like, oh, why don't we just let men come on and do this for us, ladies? It's so great. Dumb. It's great. Where's the cognitive dissonance? It's just so real. Let's That's build I mean, up yeah, the patriarchy. Just, it's, like, it's such a self contradicting worldview. Like wokeism, it's like, well, the feminism, then the gender stuff or the trans stuff, you know, which one's right because they right. contradict each other and whichever one's more woke and you have to go further down the intersection. It's like, it's just a worldview that is broken, self contradictory, right. does not work. And, but they're trying to impose that style of thinking on the rest of us on the way and like truth itself is under assault in right. the day that we're living in and it's we have to defend it yeah I know. so this isn't about hating trans people like do whatever you want all this stuff but like we're not going to play your games and redefine terms and redefine reality in terms of your I- ideology we're going to continue with objectivity with truth and those are the rules that society was built that western civilization is built on and we're going to stick to them right this is like people I was just, I just got to say this. People calling me out for saying, because I was talking about the trans stuff with the mm-hmm. Olympic athletes the other day, and I called him he, and they wanted me to call him she. Mm-hmm. It's he. I'm not going to redefine the way that I say it because other people want me to redefine it if that is what the truth is. You give them the words. It's like Michael Knowles talking about it. Michael Knowles in his book and his new book and everything. Speechless was talking about, like, you know, you redefine the words and you're changing the culture. Don't let them control the way that you talk or the way that the truth actually is. You say what's true. Right. That's the truth. Because then you call this person a she, this weightlifter coming on, you say it's a she. Well, if it is a she and you say it's a she, then she should have every single right to play in that, to do that women's weightlifting. Right. If that is what is she is defined as, she would have every single right. But if she is not that, then obviously she shouldn't be allowed to. Don't redefine the terms for people. Yep. Don't let people push you into compelled language because that, again, is where we concede ground and we are not in the business of conceding ground. No. 
Now, <laughs> if you saw our stream yesterday, we did a little segment uh, that we saw on Twitter from Libs of TikTok, and they had made a post saying, you know, give us a word, any random word down in this thread, and we will find a video on TikTok of somebody calling that particular thing racist. So just to give you some examples, somebody had posted the word glasses, and they found an Asian girl on TikTok saying that glasses are racist because they don't fit on some people's nose bridges, and typically those people are Asian. Obviously false. Uh, there was other ones so with- dumb. There was other ones with computers being racist and, and different things. So now we are going to play a fun little segment to end our show today called Can We Make It Racist? Oh, Where yes, we can. <laughs> we have a series of random words that you guys submitted in the comments of our stream yesterday. And we are going to see if any of the three of us can find a way in which this object or word could be construed as racist. So let's start with the first one. Can we make it racist? Microsoft Excel. <laughs> this one's not easy. Microsoft one's Excel. Easy. Okay. We're doing this totally improv. I hope Microsoft you guys know Excel. who are watching We are right doing now. this completely improv. We also have two other people in the room right now watching us. We have Tyler back again. Hello, Which Tyler. We can't, we can't show them. He's got to like lean into the camera. There's and then Tyler. we have Kelly, Kelly. who is Kelly, another intern at PragerU. My shot over here. We have two interns yeah. here. It's very nice. This is Kelly. <laughs> um, you staff. Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel. I got one. Okay. Yeah, it's easy. Go. Um, well, math is racist. Okay. Excel uses math, you know, the left says two plus two equals five now. So if you type two plus two in Excel, it's going to give you four. Racist. Racist. The, the boxes true. on Microsoft Excel remind black people of plots of land in slavery time. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and so, really good. And so, <laughs> oh. and so it's racist. Okay. The boxes in Excel only allow a certain amount of characters. Black people historically have longer names, therefore their names good. will oh. not show up. That's believable. They, That's actually pretty good. They are like, racist. Could, could Epinobi fit in a box? Epinobi could not fit in a box on Excel, and I feel that that's racist, and I think I'm going to sue. Deandra Leyland won't fit in my box. <laughs> so, so who wins do. that point? Who wins that point? Oh, yeah. I you don't guys, know. Is it Kelly, a competition? Tyler, you guys vote for who wins. Yeah, Amla got that one. Oh, Amla. They said Amla okay, got that's it. one point for me. Mine was better. <laughs> I th well, I think it's kind it's of unfair because Amla got to go last, and then she kind of sprung board off of Will. I did not. Yeah, she didn't even yeah, yeah, you, said boxes, you said the box. You, you said, said the, the boxes, boxes remind too. you of plots of land. I know that there are boxes on Excel. <laughs> Do you think I don't know that because I'm black? No, but it triggered in your mind the next your idea. I, <laughs> no, it didn't. Yeah. All right, I'm not going first next time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, All right, Amla goes next. first next time. Toothpaste, automatic. Toothpaste makes your teeth whiter. To be whiter is somehow better. That's racist. Boom. Okay, that I that win. worked in a reverse that time. I wish I could have gone first because that's, <laughs> <laughs> everyone had that idea. I, you just said it one. first. I win. <laughs> you said you wanted me to go first. I win. Oh, this, that was affirmative action right there. <laughs> it shouldn't be legitimate. <laughs> Nine toothpaste. Okay, hear me out. Nine out of ten doctors agree. Nine divided by three is three. <laughs> ten divided by two, five. Three fifths. Compromise <laughs> racist. Oh my oh, gosh. No. That was a stretch. <laughs> wow, wow. You're gonna get a good workout in after that stretch. Yeah. Next, Taylor. I, I don't think I have anything on this one. I'm still flabbergasted. I had the same idea as Amala, so I'm taking half the credit. Oh, okay. I'm so. redistributing some of your credit to me. Right. Wait, you guys right. can you guys can vote for me though too. So Tyler and Kelly, yeah. who won that one? Who won this one? Uh, yeah, can we yeah. roll the credit? The I win? Will? Creativity. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow, wins. Kelly. Next. Are you voting for Will, too? Uh, no, I was voting for Amla. Okay, so okay, half so for Will. Thank you know half someone. point for Will. Do I get, and I get half of Amla's points. So. <laughs> oh, gosh. So what, Taylor has a quarter point. Right. Amla gets three-fifths. Right. <laughs> Next. Temperature. Oh, all right. Okay. <clears throat> Black people think. are from Africa. This has got to be... Okay, it's got to be so, realistic. And so when it's hot, mm -hmm. they get hotter <laughs> I don't know. almost like you i don't to, even know i okay i'm gonna go with the environmental racism uh, point here uh when the temperature is hotter in america black people are disproportionately affected by that hot temperature they are disproportionately affected by climate change according to the left so temperature is racist no but their skin is darker and so like it's like why football players put like black under their eyes because it the sunlight so their eyes get hotter sure. no so, so the, you're, you're so talking the, about reverse so racism. the light goes away oh, so then yeah. black people get harder having to spend more money on their AC bills. Mm, it's mm. disproportionately sure, unfair for sure. them. Sure. Taylor, do you have anything on temperature? Um It's colder at night 
generally mm-hmm. than it is in the it day. Is. Yeah. And it's co- colder or warmer in different places of the world at different times. Right. And uh, that's an unequal distribution of warmth. Oh. Uh, so it, that's racist. We need to redistribute <laughs> yeah, the warmth. Yeah, we need to redistribute the warmth. I love that. Taylor, I will redistribute Taylor warmth. wins that one. <laughs> <laughs> not, that, okay. not that kind of warmth. No, Taylor, so we all have <laughs> okay. essentially one point. Nearly. All right, fine. All right. I'm in the lead I with one and a half. <laughs> all right, go again. Dark chocolate. I've... I've got I've got my answer. I'll wait for you guys. You go. So dark chocolate. We all know that it is it is darker than than milk chocolate. It is darker than white chocolate. It's also more bitter. Why is the the darker chocolate more bitter? Because are you calling me an angry black woman? I feel really, really offended by that. I think that's a really racist trope. I don't like to hear it. You're stereotyping me because of my skin color. So why is dark chocolate more bitter? Because it tastes bad. (laughs) It's kind of racist. Dark chocolate is racist because. <laughs> he I already know I have, I have the best I one, one on this one. I got one. All right, one. go, go, go. I got no, one. I'll go. I'm thinking. Dark chocolate is racist because why does it have to be called dark chocolate? Mm. Dark chocolate, do like, does it need an adjective? The normal should be just, it should just be called chocolate. <laughs> why do you need the extra adjective? Wow. Dark should be nor- normalized darkness. Wow. Yeah, that chocolate looks That's a little racist. bit light to me, that actually. Is- that is very profound. Uh, Tyler and Kelly, where do we land on this one? Who won the point? Wait, uh, oh, do you have one, Will? Can someone look up the melting point of dark chocolate <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> versus milk chocolate? Oh, somebody look it up really quickly. I don't uh, think Taylor fine. gets that one. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I will that concede. Really we can't draw this out. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Taylor wins that point. Ooh, let's go. Okay. Next one. Nail polish. Oh. This one's kind of difficult. Nail polish is racist. <laughs> it's trailed off. <laughs> I'm thinking. Oh, man. Oh, this is difficult. This one is I'm a little bit to be tougher. A leftist. This one's a little bit tougher. It's racist because the icon that we're using for this has a white person's fingers oh. on it. That's true. And yeah, what? the colors of nail polish are generally white centric. Yeah. Because they're Eurocentric. they don't show up as good. People get oh, white yeah. colored yeah. nails. <laughs> Why are nails naturally white? Also, you can get like a French manicure, and that's Eurocentric. So uh, you should be getting a Nigeria manicure. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> that sounds like something you find on Urban Dictionary <laughs> that you don't want to look up. That is really good. <laughs> Have you ever had a yeah. Nigerian manicure? You ever get a Nigerian uh, manicure? We can make these jokes because Amala is in here and she's Nigerian. Yes, yeah, exactly. we can. No, it's really um, I'm gonna... We have a black friend. Yeah, we so do. It's fine. So you. it's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go and say just the generic one that manicures are uh, manicures and pedicures are a sign of elitism <clears throat> and that they are quite expensive. It's also and sexist because manicure, um, right? Excuse me, should be woman manicure. Woman yeah, manicure. More. Wow. <laughs> Uh, so black people, we all know, are disproportionately affected by, you know, socioeconomic differences and poverty. So they can't afford to get manicures and pedicures. Yeah, so nail I don't even think they know what not, manicures are. I know. Do black people even know what nail polish I, is? This Actually, is a great question. Have a good one for this one. Kelly's okay. Kelly, you want to come on and share into my mic? Well, come on over here. Okay, well, um, nail polish implies that people, like, actually get their nails painted and... Black people do acrylics. So nail polish is just racist because... Because it's, it's not polish, it's not acrylic. Right, right, right. Ah. They're not catering to the cultural differences between white and black people. That was very good, Kelly, but I'm not voting for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still voting Tyler, for you. Tyler, who are you voting for? I'm giving that one to Kelly. Yes. Oh, Kelly. Wow. Simp. We gotta write Kelly on <laughs> <laughs> I gotta write Kelly on here. I'm voting for me, but it's fine. <laughs> I'm voting for me too. Okay, well <laughs> right, next the one. voting system is skewed now. Next one. 200 Roller votes are coming skates. in from Arizona later today. <laughs> <laughs> a new batch was found. Yeah, a new batch of, of votes was found for Will later tonight. Uh, Roller, Roller skates. <clears throat> this is very difficult. Mm-hmm. I hope people in the comments are playing along too. We I know. I hope you guys are actually yeah, putting we'll, in yeah. your suggestions love to hear here. How these are racist. Tyler, can you watch the comments and tell us if there's any funny ones? I'm trying to glance, but it's hard. Um, okay. Roller skates have wheels, and wheels were invented <laughs> by white people. By white people, probably. Probably. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> and that it echoes 
their white privilege and uh, uh, white supremacy. You can't make up lies <laughs> and then say that you can do whatever you want. Yeah, the they time. make up That's the whole point. <laughs> they find any way to all tie it to why white supremacy is behind it lies. and why it's bad. That's all I'm doing. Roller skates <laughs> imply that <laughs> black people are rolling joints. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. I can't. I'm I'm going to go back to my socioeconomic argument. Roller skates are exponentially more expensive than shoes. So, you know, black people are disproportionately affected by poverty. They, they, a lot of them can't buy roller skates, just like a lot of them can't get voter oh, that's ID. That's racist, Amala. Yeah, that's pretty they racist. Can't buy, they can't get roller skates, just like they can't get voter ID, you know, according to the mm -hmm. left. So white people can buy roller skates, therefore they move faster in life than black people do, so black people have to run twice as hard to catch up to the white people on roller skates. Or the left will say that black people can't afford cars, so their only Option. mode of travel is <laughs> roller skates. <laughs> that is actually something that the left would say. That's so funny. You see, go to Compton, and they're just all roller skating <laughs> down the street. Place your votes. What do you guys okay. think? Who's who's was the best? I'm going with Amla. Yeah, I'll hand out Blue. Yeah, wow. there we go. But sure, I guess that means half I get that point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Split decision. Do we have more here? Boats. Oh, boats. Um. Okay. Bo oh. Will's got one. No, yeah, I'm you go. Good. All right, I'll okay. go. You go. He hear me out. Transatlantic slave trade. Okay. Ah, uh, you took it from me. Dang it. <laughs> they went across the ocean, right? Yeah. Um, they should no longer be allowed in America because boats are technically a a remnant of not only Christopher Columbus but the transatlantic slave trade. You can't take two true. things. You took two things. I took two things. You, you can't you steal took imperialism my imperialism and the slave trade. Because both they are tied to both colonialism uh -huh. and the slave trade. And when when people of color, especially me, when I see a boat, I'm just quaking in my boots that I'm going to be uh, attacked by some colonialist. Black people think, white people think that black people need boats because white people assume black people can't swim. I was going to do that oh, one too. Oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> so they one? give them boats. Uh, do you have one, Taylor? Not now. You guys took three. Well, more creative. There were three ideas <laughs> to do, and you you took two, and you took one. So and I'm claiming I need reparations for the ideas that were stolen from me. Who's who's was like the best, many guys? black people? I never had a chance. Yep, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Because white people. Stole it. I know mine was the best, but who was the best, Taylor? Yeah, yours was. Actually. Um, I'm going. Wow. wow, I'm just... They voted for Amala. You can what go I get mean? me some water. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another one. Mountains. Oh, I already got it, mine. Okay. Mm. The peak of the mountain, the pinnacle, the upper echelon of a mountain is white. Why is the, the top tier of the mountain, why is the highest place that you can go to a representation of whiteness? It really should be multiculturalist. <laughs> if only they put some black ice up there instead of white if snow. If only, if only, because I don't understand why the peak of mountains is white. That's racist to me. Mountains are racist because according to the left, black people have it so hard in this country. Mm -hmm. They could never climb one. Mm -hmm. So by even telling them about mountains and challenges, they're going to get too emotional and upset and freak out. Right. Okay. So they can't climb mountains. Good. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good reason. Taylor. Yeah. Mountains are an obstacle that right. needs to be flattened right. for society to be equal. <laughs> exactly. That's what I was trying to gotcha. say better, but I didn't say it right. <laughs> yeah. Disproportionate so land. Yeah, they 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 represent hierarchy itself, which is racist. Okay. So it they they they're racist. Tyler and Kelly, who wins that one? That one goes to Taylor. Yeah. Yes. Taylor. Yeah. See, that was one where I benefited from going last because I built on you. There you ideas. go. You there you go. Stole my idea. Just like you stole my land. <laughs> Anyways, next guys. Oxygen. Ooh, this is kind of white people breathing all the black man's air. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that was very All right, so we'll lost this one. Next, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Oxygen. Hmm. We need some like background music for these next time. I know we do, we do. We need like Jeopardy thinking music. Um I have to think about this. I don't know if I can think of something for oxygen. I mean, there's definitely got to be something. Let's see. Um, oxygen is breathed in 
used and then transformed into carbon dioxide. Black people have been used by, <laughs> <laughs> by America. <laughs> <laughs> and you that know, that's really funny. They yeah. never get any credit. So, yeah, why does carbon dioxide always get all the credit? <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> that was really funny. There you go. All right, we'll give that one to Amla. Yeah, good job, Amla. Thank really you. Good. I can't top that. Okay. I'm not going to cry with tears I'm to, cry. to win this. So, that was really funny. <laughs> next one. Fried chicken. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, nice. fried chicken oh, this slide is already racist. <laughs> also, yeah, guys. Seriously. You submitted these answers. We did not just pick these randomly. Yeah, these are what you guys chose. This is what you guys chose and voted for. For us to go for. Fried chicken. Um, <laughs> how is it racist? This is really difficult. Well, don't the left... There was an article about this, actually. I know. I already know my... You go for it. Go Wait. For it. I, I can't remember. Okay. You're not giving me a chance, Amla. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you time to think while I share mine. Wait, what do you have, Taylor, for fried chicken? I don't one? know. I'm waiting for you guys to do something so I can springboard off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my gosh. Playing chess, Fried not chicken checkers. Is I just want to say that all of my responses have been the best. Not all of them. All of them have been the best. You had some decent ones. Your last one was a heater. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Fried chicken because black people can't afford ovens, so they fry the chicken. Okay, so another socioeconomic. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Here we go, guys. Hear me out. I'm going to take you from point A to point B so you can get where I'm at. So look at these chains. Popeyes, KFC. Who else sells fried chicken? Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A Chick -A sells fried chicken. Do you know what their, their best seller is? White meat, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. And nobody wants the dark meat on the fried chicken. And nobody wants to talk about it. And nobody wants to talk about it. It's like, you know, why 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 can't we talk about this? this, this <laughs> Will, don't you like dark meat better? Oh, I love dark meat. I'm a big dark meat guy. Chicken. Chicken. Yeah, chicken. <laughs> chicken. When it comes to chicken. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, why are these chains selling out of white meat and not dark meat? So, I um, would... Well, I think they no, do. No, hold so. on. Um, the, all the chains you just mentioned are founded by rich white men Ooh. who make these products to take black people's money wow. and perpetuate their domination over the system. And also, wow. did you hear the word you said? Chains? Chains, yeah. <laughs> Restaurant chains? chains? Yeah. Where do, you th where do you think that yeah, came from? Where do you from? think that came oh, from? Oh, that is really good. They have their workers slaving in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, slaving away. <laughs> Oh, Who wins, guys? Oh, Tyler, man. Kelly. I like how Will built off of Taylor's, but I think the credit goes to Taylor. Hey. Okay. All right. Do we have a final tally? Do we? I think uh, that was the last one. So Will comes in at two points. <laughs> That's a bunch of bullcrap. Or honestly, it's like two and a quarter points, <laughs> or one and a quarter points. Uh, and then Taylor and I tie with four and four. Oh. Is there a tie word? Uh, the, the tie is affirmative action, so I win because I'm black. <laughs> yeah. so exactly. It's like, okay, if we're both going to be four and four, I win because of my skin color. Uh, there you go. Can't argue with that. Can't argue with that. You literally can't. I wish I had my, I should have made a little black card and pulled it for you guys. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is our show for today. If you liked our stories, if you had a laugh at the end, please like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell because you don't always get notified when we go live. If you truly want to be notified when we go live, go ahead and text live, L-I-V-E, to 41776 and you will get notifications sent to your very phone when we go live every day on Facebook and on YouTube. You will also get other updates as to PragerU content that we are also working on. Yes, you will. Thank and you, everyone, for watching so much. Yeah. You know, continue watching. We like doing the stream for you. Fill out our survey. Give us your thoughts because we will need those answers. Yeah, we do. Okay. Till then, keep finding new ways to make things racist. As we all are. <laughs>